Reading a scripture is not the same as reading a novel. It is like seeing without eyes, like hearing without ears. An intuitive thinker understands the subjects and ideas better than a superficial person. The books of the teachings reveal to the degree of the comprehension of the reader. The books of the teachings reveal to the degree of the comprehension of the reader. Most people read the teachings too fast. They overlook the essential elements and thus miss the treasure which is contained in the statements of the great initiates. When we unfold our consciousness through a spiritual discipline, the scriptures slowly reveal their fuller significance. To make the wisdom teachings understandable to an average intelligence, symbols and allegories are used. To make the wisdom teachings Understandable to an average intelligence, symbols and allegories are used. The Bible is full of allegories. They serve to awaken the intuition. They should not be taken literally. Okay, jumping back over here. The Tibetan, Alice Bailey writes, I would call attention to the fact that all I can do here is put into words certain ancient symbols and emphasize the process of enunciating a word or a sound, which produces a symbolic form, which in its turn is capable of translation into words. These must in their turn be comprehended intuitively and adapted to individual need and thus be assimilated into the life practice. Otherwise, these interesting ideas are worse than useless and serve but to increase responsibility. I'm jumping around here to try and make it more clear with them. Um, kind of streamlining the sentences, and I hope that that's helpful. This last sentence here, I'll read out in full. The capacity to see objective significances and then apply them to life is an expression of the true esoteric sense. If one studies these tabulations and phrases with care, they will be found to convey indication as to one's individual ray, life tendencies, and purpose. We're learning our purpose right? We each have a unique purpose. This life has taught us not that, that there is just so much that's arbitrary and pointless and, and meaningless and whatever. And that's, that's couldn't be further from the truth. If the appeal, the various statements make, and then the particular ray evoke an intuitive understanding on the part of the student so that he recognizes himself his ray energy and aspects of his latent and deeply desired spiritual nature, then these communications I am making here as to purpose, name, and quality will be profitable and useful. And to break that down, it's just talking about the way that these each section is broken down. Um, they're giving us the purpose, the purpose of the ray. They're giving us different names that are commonly referred to of the Lord of the ray so that we can understand and study that to get an understanding. And then they're giving us the quality through the six brothers, the qualities of each of the ray. And this way of giving this to us is so that we can figure out which resonates with us, that we can figure out intuitively, because no one's going to tell you. I mean, they could, but it's not as, as much as if you kind of figure it out and, and resonate with it, which ray type you resonate with and have the energy of, and you'll have um, a representation of your latent and deeply desired spiritual nature. So this is why they're giving it to us in form of purpose, name, and quality, so that it can be more useful. Some of the names of the Lord of the Third Ray indicate his use of force and his real nature. They are as follows. The Keeper of the Records, the Lord of Memory, the Unifier of the Lower Four, going to say flower the interpreter of that which is seen the interpreter of that which is seen i like that one the lord of balance the divine separator the discriminating essential life the one who produces alliance the three-sided triangle there you go with the triangle again the illuminator of the lotus the builder of the foundation like the cornerstone we we're talking about the forerunner of the light, the one who veils and yet reveals, the dispenser of time, 
the Lord of space, the universal mind. You hear that one a lot. The threefold wick, the great architect of the universe. And many other terms which indicate relation to light, to time, to space, to the manifested logos, to matter, and to the power which evokes the form. The power which evokes the form. Against this is the power of the feminine energy, the mother aspect, which takes in the will, the divine will of deity, the all, that wants to express itself. This energy receives that expression puts it into a mathematically exact order, focusing on what karma is in this realm. What And, and it's not just like good and bad. It's like what action is going to lead to this eventuality and what's the karma of this step. If I take this, like, like putting together, like cooking a recipe, if I put together this ingredient with this ingredient and this ingredient, I'm going to birth this meal. I'm going to create this meal. I'm going to manifest this form. And so... We're learning in this ray the power which evokes the form. If all of these names are studied in connection with modern developments or modern culture and science, it will become apparent how potent and influential in our day and time is this particular ray life and how his energies, having produced the tangible objective worlds, are turned to the manifestation of our modern civilization with its material emphasis its search as to the nature of time and space, and that mental unfoldment, which is the glory and the destiny of our particular race to demonstrate. So there's like a mixed bag here, right? Our current civilization is heavily on this ray. So we're seeing things like the divine separator. But we know that we're supposed to be here to unify, right? When we're in consciousness, but this realm, but this energy, this ray can also be used there's a higher aspect and there's a lower aspect of each ray. So the lower aspect would be the one who gets all the information. We get all the records, right? What does our government do? We take everyone's records, right? We store everyone's information. We keep things separated, right? But there's also things here that represent the highest aspect of what we can do with this mental capacity. With our mental capacity, we can produce alliances, right? We can balance out the three-sided triangle. We can illuminate the lotus. Those are other occult terms. We can build a strong, firm foundation of the pyramid, our pyramids, to get ourselves, our Merkaba, in action and moving. Um, and we can understand more about these abstract things and these philosophical things like time and space and the universe and all that stuff. We'll learn about the one who veils and also reveals because we can do both, right? We can be seen and we can be unseen when we learn about um, these teachings because we know that this side has been unseen and this side has been seen, right? We're just going to balance it out, right? We have the capacity to do both. Um, mental unfoldment. Mental unfoldment. Learning all of this, which is what the Agnishvatas have descended down to give us this mental capacity, the ability to separate us from animals. It's the glory and the destiny of our race to demonstrate our mental capacity, right? So that's what awakening is about. That's what consciousness is about. The qualities which characterize this Ray Lord might be enumerated in the following phrases. We must bear in mind that the seventh or synthetic characteristic of each of the rays is denoted by the Ray name up above. This is what the ray is denoted by. Um, it's devote, denoted by the ray name and is not specifically stated in the other six qualities. His six brothers is the other six rays speaking on this ray, right? That's why it's an allegory. It's like a story. Again, we're supposed to intuit and interpret it and see where we resonate with and understand it based on these phrases that the Tibetan is giving us this information in this format to help us to download it in different ways, right? His six brothers, sons of the one father, the one became the three, became the seven, seven rays. His six brothers, sons of the one father, chanted these injunctions to him on the day his renewed act of his renewed activity, on what we call the day of creation. So again, this is the ray that creates and burst the sun 
into physical form. The Holy Ghost, the spirit matter. This is the day of creation. His six brothers uh, chanted these injunctions to this ray, Lord. One, produce the dual form and veil the life. The life is the father energy, the spirit. Let form appear and prove itself divine. All is of God. Quality, the power to manifest. So this ray has the power to manifest. This ray represents the divine purpose of expressing the power to manifest. We are creators. We can manifest when we balance out. Others are manifesting this experience that we're having here right now, and we can balance out to manifest our own version of experience. That will be, you know, uh, less doom and gloom, perhaps. I would wager. That's what we would like, likely want more of. Again, let the form appear and prove itself divine. We appeared, and we have to prove ourselves to be divine, right? Before you get this information, it's not going to just be handed to you. It's going to take time and study. Like you're sitting here, you're taking the time and you're doing the study. You're learning the information. Um, prove yourself divine because the life has been veiled to us so far. We've only gotten half of the triangle. We've only gotten half of the triangle. We need to activate our spirit um, so that we can get that full energetic whole circle, all 360 degrees. All is of God. Everything. Both sides. Two. Number two. Conform the shell to that which dwells within. Let the world egg appear. An egg is a representation of like a little, a little special little being creature being birthed inside, and it's going to rise up. And then when it cracks, um, and it makes its appearance, it emerges right like a little chick, a little chick from the egg. Let the world egg appear. Here in the world egg. Let ages pass and then let the soul appear. Let life emerge within a destined time. And this quality is the power to evolve. I love this second one because it's saying that this is all a construct. And we see it through the ages when you look and study at the different things. I think the video of um, Pluto and Scorpio generations talked about the different ages and too. We know about the golden age, the iron age, whatever, silver age, bronze age. Martin Kinney's work talking about, um, you know, how we're moving from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius and how everything lines up with these big, the great cosmic clock and these different cycles of what the planets do when they're moving. And it takes years, like the Pluto cycle is 248 years around the sun. And it's this great, you know, designed, orchestrated dance that's happening and each of those planets are going through their own evolution too, but we're evolving within this earth sphere. And that's all we have to focus on right now. And it's a purpose. It's it's exciting. But right now we're just like willy-nilly going through this thing and feeling like we're helpless or not helpless. We just got to do the work and understand there's more to this, right? There's more to our triangle. There's more to everything. All is of God. It's been veiled. And at a certain time, it was revealed to us. The soul appeared. Life emerged within a destined time. Quality is the power to evolve. We've been evolving and we're continuing to evolve. Three, let mind control. It's an interesting sentence. Three words. Let mind control. Not let your mind be controlled. Let mind control. And again, mind is the aspect that the Agnishvatas have imbued us with so that we can have a mental capacity that separates us from the animal kingdom. So we're the higher kingdom, the fourth kingdom, you know, then minerals, vegetables, animals. So we've got this mind. And what do we do with it? Let it control. Let the clear shining of the sun of life reveal the mind of God and set the shining one upon his way, then lead him to the central point where all is lost within the light supernal. Quality is mental illumination. So we're going to reveal the mind of God, shine upon the way, 
We're going to lead to the central point where all is lost. All these other mental things and these little mind chitta, like they talk about in the, in the Hinduism teachings, the mind chatter of all those things. We're going to go through these shedding of our identities and our false self until we just rest in the light supernal, which is our infinite source, right? That's when you can really activate that God power to balance out the scales because they're activating um, Saturnian power or Satan power. Um, and there's equal force and power capable within you, within each of us. But in order to receive that, we must have mental illumination Focus our mind on right things, right principles, um, right actions, the rectitude. Over here, we need to focus on our warden of the south. Our warden of the south teaches us that when the sun disappears, we raise our column as a sign that during the hours of darkness, rectitude and wisdom shall prevail in all outward ways. Rectitude. What is rectitude? Rectitude is morally correct behavior or thinking, righteousness. Our morally correct behavior, thinking, our righteousness can prevail in the darkness if we choose for it to do so. You can't just be like, let's see how this plays out. We can see how it's playing out. It's imbalanced. Balance the scales. Four, God and his form are one. We are the forms of God. God and the form is one. Reveal this fact, O sovereign Lord of form. So this ray reveals the fact that God and his form are one because the mother knows that she worked with mathematical exactitude to put together the energy of the father and the matter to form spirit matter, the son. So you're one. We took these two and we made them one and we created something. The form is still the blend of these two energies, these two things, spirit and matter have blended to create this form. Our physical world needs to blend with our spiritual world and we need to understand that we are one. This fact is revealed by this ray, the third ray. God and his form are one. Negate the dual concept. Negate. Undo, go against the dual concept where we're just separate. Everything is black and white. Blend color to the form. Everything's no longer black and white. We now have color in the form. So many possibilities, so many things. We understand that there's so much more that we didn't, we didn't know about ourselves, about this whole world, about even the people that are trying to be in control of us, that they're just a part of our same source, right? And they're just doing what they've been allowed to run rampant and do. Um, because we haven't raised our column to declare that rectitude and wisdom shall prevail. We haven't, we haven't said anything. We've just been watching idly. But life is one. Harmony is complete. Prove thus the two are one. It's our work. Our purpose is to prove that the two are one. Prove that we are divine. Prove our power. Prove that we have the capacity to wield the God power um, in, an, in such a way that can balance out the scales and imagine how powerful you can be, but you have to be able to know that you need to know how to curtail that too. You are not mightier than the Lord. We've already seen that. Once you decide that you're mightier than the Lord, you're on this side, okay? The scale's already in balance. Learn about the might of the Lord within you and balance the scales that way. Keep yourself in check though. Balance the scales lest you contribute more to the problem than to the solution. This quality is the power to produce synthesis on the physical plane, oneness, unifying, harmonizing. Fifth, produce the garment of the Lord. Set forth the robe of many colors. Now that we have the, all the colors, set forth the garment, the beautiful garment of the world. What are we going to wrap ourselves in? Um, all of these forms have all of these different garments basically that we're clothing our bodies are different clothings and shields that we wear over our spirit energy our life force our god energy so we're gonna robe them in garments um, of many different colors 
And then it says to separate the robe from that which hides behind its many folds. You're going to separate that robe then in consciousness is what happened. And we were separated from what hides behind our robes. We were completely unaware of our spirit God form, of our abilities, of the rest of the 90% capacity of our potential of our brains. But then we get to a point, what did it say? At the destined time. Now is the destined time, Pluto and Scorpio generation. At the destined time, take off the veiling sheaths. Again, up top, veil the life, spirit, and our potential to wield that power. It was veiled from us until a destined time. That time is now. We've been mentally illumined to that fact that we have light supernal within us, that we and a God are one. God and his form are one. We are not higher than God. And we do not want to do that or be that. But we do want to know what's been veiled. We want to see God. We want to see ourselves. We want to know God. We want to know ourselves. Take Christ from off the cross. This is the quality of scientific investigation. So that process of Starting back at the at the beginning and going step by step by step through understanding. Understanding is the scientific process, scientific investigation process. This last part here, take Christ from off the cross. That's just a representation again. The cross, that's symbol rich as well. Christianity, Christ on the cross. It was a sacrifice of a, a, um, a public display of shame for, you know, being you know, this magical, mystical being in a time where you're supposed to be within the box, right? He was thinking outside of the box. He had to be sacrificed and put on, hung on the cross. So take Christ from off the cross is the final step of this scientific investigation. What happened when they took Christ off of the cross? He was buried and then he rose again, right? He showed himself to be more than this flesh, spirit. He was born again, right? Christ rose up from off the cross. So what happens when we take Christ off the cross? We take ourselves off from being displayed in our shame and our ignorance, right? We take ourselves off from being shamed for our excellence as well. We take ourselves off the cross so that we can be born again and we can show that we can resurrect and we can rise up from this imbalance. But what's more than that also is this, what did I miss here? I think I missed something here. Jumping here. Um, Isaiah, really quick, another thing about the, the stone. There's this scripture that was um, interesting, um, King James Bible version. Therefore, the, the, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Um, the Amplified Bible, just jump here because I was going to go through these, but these are just different versions of the Bible and the interpretation of the scripture or the scripture being made more clear, more clear, more clear. Because again, it goes from these allegories, these symbols, just like these ancient teachings, um, these um, esoteric books and teachings is written in these allegories and symbols that are supposed to be for the average intelligence to then intuit the meaning and understand what's written in here, what's being told by the stories, um, not to be taken literally, right? That's what we learned from the Agnishvatas. They were giving us this mind essence so that we can learn this stuff, learn about ourselves through these stories and symbols, um, just like tarot cards, learning through the stories and the symbols and the depictions. So anyways, the Amplified Bible tells us that, therefore, the Lord God says this, listen carefully, I am laying a Zion, I am laying in Zion, the matrix Zion is the mother city, right, where they come from, the ship, whatever, um, in Zion, um, a stone, a tested stone. We are the stones, our tested stones, right? Um, precious cornerstone for the secure foundation has been firmly placed in Zion, the kingdom of God, kingdom of God within us. So a cornerstone, a precious cornerstone has been placed within the kingdom of God. He who believes, who trusts in, and relies on and adheres to that stone or diamond will not be disturbed or give way in sudden panic. The one who believes will be unshakable. It's very interesting stuff right there in that, in that scripture. But where we were 
was going to jump over to the cross. So take Christ from off the cross. Thank you for bearing with me. And it's really late. It's like 1.40 right now in the morning. <laughs> but I'm like, energize. So let's get this one. Another image depicted here. Take Christ from off the cross. In astrology, we have a reference to the cross. So we have the 12 zodiac signs and they're broken down into threes right here, right? And those threes make this, um, these different quarters that come into our seasons, right? The different seasons that we see in the year. We have summer, autumn, winter, and spring. Summer solstice, you know, when we have the equator of the world too, when we have the sun rising and setting, just like we have over here, this rising and setting when the sun comes and sun comes back and all this stuff. There's a zeitgeist documentary goes into this um, in a in a better way than I'm going to be capable of right now, but really um, mirroring and, and highlighting the similarities with the Bible story the story and the allegories of the Bible with the astrology, which we were told in the religion not to look at at all. Maybe because it gives us more of our our whole story, our 360. So take Christ from off the cross. The cross right here again, we have a cross coming from the start of the zodiac, which is Aries. So this is why the new year doesn't start until Aries season, because we're starting off this zodiac. So in Aries season, we start the spring equinox when the sun is reaching its highest point right here between Gemini and Cancer. That forms this point of the cross. So you see the cross is going up and down and left and right. We have Aries over to Libra, which is um, our rising ascendant and descendant in astrology. Aries to Libra energy. That's one point of our nature, our personality, our makeup is our how we're seen by others and our the least, the part that we don't connect with as much that it wasn't, the sun wasn't shining here at the time we were born and each of our, our birth charts will be different and it's unique to each of us. I can't go into all this right now because I'm kind of tired. I'm starting to, but we can see here what I was trying to say. Maybe not. Aries to Libra. First house to seventh house, that line creates part of the cross. Gemini to Sagittarius, third house to ninth house creates the other half of the cross. Our astrological cross, this is seen as the zodiac wheel cross. This is also like astro theology cross you can search for, but I'll link to this as well if you want to study it and look into it. It's called the cardinal cross, or the grand cross in astrology. But again, so... From Gemini to um, Sagittarius, again, that's that um, lower mind and higher mind. The philosopher and the young student, um, the Gemini is the energy that's an air sign, but it's very curious about all these things. It takes things apart, which is like the fifth ray, the scientist learning things in a very um, technical way, taking it apart to understand it. And Sagittarius is the higher mind, the ninth house, which is actually the big ideas, which is what we're learning in the third ray, which is like... Uh, First cause is metaphysics, philosophy, the uh, matters of time and space in the universe and how this all works. And then Gemini is like the smallest parts of those things and also understanding. So those are the different elements of the mind. And um, it's also, you know, we have Capricorn and Cancer, which is the other aspect of the cross which is um, actually more so. So we have the, um, oh, I'm blanking right now, but on the cross, you'll see the cardinal cross is actually looking at the cancer and the Capricorn cancer is your mother, mother energy. So your home life, how you were raised, and those internal things. Oh, and then your midheaven, sorry, Capricorn. Yes, on the 10th house is your midheaven. So 10th house to fourth house and then seventh house to first house. That's another time, another place, but this is just to show you another cross that Jesus was on. So Jesus is the monad, right? The embodiment of all of these zodiacs. He was sacrificed, hung on the cross. And then 
rose again, like the sun goes through this sequence and it falls in the winter, falls down in the winter and can't be seen. And then the sun rises again, right? So after that period of three, he was spent six hours on the cross too. We have six elements right here on half of the, on one half of the cross. These six hours down here are in darkness. And then we have six hours or six signs that are in the day, in the light. Six in the day, six in the light, in the night. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to jump off that right there. That just kind of stirs some juices for some other research that can be done. And here we are. So take Christ from off the cross. Quality is scientific investigation. We're going to look further into that cross. We're going to look further into ourselves. We're going to look further into these allegories and these symbols so that we can make sure that this information is not wholly lost. Where did that go? We want to make sure that Did you guys see it? Did I miss it? I really liked how it said that if we um, all right here. Okay. So we want to make sure that we're looking at this as more than just ancient, interesting ideas. But these names that they're giving down here, these aphorisms that were being given, the qualities that are being described, we want to make sure that we understand them and understand them as more than something that's just useless because it'll increase our responsibility because we don't want to just collect information just for the sake of having it. You know, that's Gemini energy. <laughs> we're just, we're collecting it for a purpose, right? I'm sorry that I wasted so much time just to get to here, but um, this, this paragraph, it seems like a deviation from teaching. It's more like a kind of a cautionary paragraph that says, again, like, I can't give you everything. I can't spoon feed you all of this. What I can give you is symbols and allegories that have power because they were designed to do so because this is like the Agnishvatas have stepped down their intelligence or their um, their divinity, stepped down from their space on the highest rankings because they're already evolved and already manifested and proved themselves as divine, but they've chosen to move down into contemplation and come closer to our dense realm to give us the mental capacity. We're giving us the seeds and we have to, we have to grow it. You know, we have to take these pieces of the puzzle and put them together. Otherwise it's useless, right? It's useless. And it just increases our responsibility. I mean, we're responsible for this great task of understanding ourselves, but we just are just dabbling on the surface of just collecting information and not really applying it in our lives. It says here that it really wants to make sure that we um, assimilate this into our life practice. And that's what I was wanting to say there. So finishing off with this last one, six, let the two paths converge, balance the pairs of opposites and let the path appear between the two. God and the path and man are one. God and the path and man are one. Quality is balance. Thus, the three major rays sum up in themselves the process of creation, of energizing through the urge of the divine will and the work of the four minor rays, as they are called, though with no idea of their being lesser or greater, each of the seven rays are equal. It's to elaborate or differentiate the qualities of the life and so produce the infinite multiplicity of forms which will enable the life, our source, to assume its many points of focus and express through the process of evolutionary manifestation its diverse characteristics. All of this is for a purpose. The purpose is for deity to express itself through all of these many um, colors that break down into ever more distinct and distinguishable parts. Um, but 
the the goal wasn't for us to be separated into all these different parts and these forms and just let it be that we were supposed to unify back into something greater. We were manifest for a purpose. So that third ray um, ends up this first part. And I'll see you back for the next video where we go into the first of the rays of attributes, fourth ray, which is a good one as well. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm sorry that this has been like extremely, extremely long. Um, but it was fun. All right. Take good care. Thank you for watching.